Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today we have a 3080 video about two things. Firstly, a new card in itself and secondly, people have been asking how the thermal modded Gigabyte Gaming OC 3080 is holding up in terms of temperatures as well as hash rate. That's it, let's go. We'll talk about the new one first. I scored a tough one from Asus. I saw that card with colleagues of mine, like Mining Chamber, and honestly always found it a beautiful design. Again, it was a local find. I am sure every country has their own sort of regional marketplace. And that is how I've been scoring most of my cards. Looking out for deals, but of course I'm also often paying premiums too. But no full PC buy to get a 3080 this time though. It's a massive card. Honestly I have to say it's probably one of the nicest GPUs in terms of build and looks I ever owned. So it got the same slot in my PC the Gigabyte one had before that we can do fair comparisons. So of course what is interesting for you guys is the following. Hash rate, overclock, memory temperature and how I did in the silicon lottery. Here I had it harder at first to find a setting than with the gaming OC. When I got higher power limits on memory overclock, the memory gets above 100 degrees celsius, which you know already I don't like to see. 110 degrees celsius is a number which would be damaging to the card in the long term. So meh for now. I did not manage to achieve the 100 mega hash these cards are famous for. The best hash rate I managed without hitting a constant 98C on the memory was a power limit of 67 minus 300 core and plus 1400 memory giving me 97.5 mega hash a second. With memory temperatures jumping between 96 and 98 everything more and it would go 98 and above. I even pointed a little arctic USB fan on the backplate, but it did not really change anything. Then I thought, hey, it will stay in my PC anyway for a while. I already had an USB fan on it, but what if I lay a 120mm fan on the backplate? So I did, and it indeed helped. First I only tried a weak fractal case fan, and with the same setting as before, it lowered the temps by 2 to 4 degrees. So it's hovering between 94 and 96 and even bumped the hash rate a bit 97.5 to 98.5 so of course i ended up trying a stronger fan i thought noctua industrial for a second but then again this is one meter next to my ears i did go for a beefy 0.4 amp fan weirdly it stayed with the 94 to 96 memory temperature but i could also now max out the memory with the temperature staying the same so for now the SS stuff needed a fan on the backplate, power limit to 69%, minus 300 core and plus 1500 memory to get to 101.2 mega hash a second at 234 watts from the software. The maximum temperature for that would be 96 degrees C on the memory. Of course it's not ideal that one has to do things for a single card, but the 3080s are just memory beasts. I might go deaf here soon with that fan on it. I need more noxious in my life. If you remember though how bad the gaming OC was in the beginning, well you see how great it is doing next, but it was way worse than the TIFF before any modding. So yeah, a bit of effort to get it running the way one wants and I'm not sure yet how I would treat that card in a rig. Nevertheless, it means there will be more before and after content for you folks. I did see backplate pads on the card though in the unboxing, so I expected it to be better. So another card for the thermal pad list. I did research already and the tufts are a bit more complicated with their pads. I'll try to get to it soon. To also show you a nice stable cool 3080 hash rate, let's turn to the modded 3080 from the recent video. The gaming OC is still holding up nice. Even with a way harsher overclock, the maximum memory temperature did not go above 88 degrees C again. Some people commented that for the front you need to have 2.5 mm, not 2 mm, but the temperatures I got are just impressive on core as well as memory, so I'm leaving it as it is for now. On the other hand, I heard many happy folks too, with 20 degree or even higher temperature drops than that, so maybe this has to do with thermal pad density. Long story short, when it was the last time in a 
Windows system, the memory was maxed out to 1500, power limit at 62% and minus 200 core and that gave me 101.8 MHz a second hash rate and that was at around 229 watts from the software. In HiveOS I managed to achieve a bit more, so 102.5 MHz a second with a power limit of 225 minus 200 core and a memory of 2900. Don't forget that HiveOS numbers count the memory double. It also has its own fan in the trick, so I feel safe with the memory temperatures. I will still return it to Windows from time to time to check up on it. I now have even better thermal pads I could test on that card, but I think it would be a waste of expensive thermal pads to do so now while it's still working fine. So I will keep an eye on it and first we can do updates on the longevity of the thermal pad mod. Afterwards we can try another brand. That's it for this video, a new 3080 which will need some care and love and an update on the modded one. Even though it's sad that we have to fix cards for manufacturers, honestly after these results I'd buy another gaming OC card if I would get the chance. But markets are rough, I paid around one kidney for the tough, but I personally do think that the chip situation might still be like that for a while or even get worse. So I jump on cards in my area when I see them. Thank you all for tuning in. I have some stressful times here at the moment, that's why I was hesitant to do the full build videos I promised you yet, but that just means more content for you folks is messing up, I don't mind that. There are also some old school stuff and builds too between all that mining content waiting for you. Please subscribe to catch it and for weekly tech and crypto content. I wish all the best to each and every one of you, happy mining and bye.